Hey there folks, and welcome back to the Akenia campaign. Last time we did a bunch of economic and infrastructure stuff and basically set up our first round of micromanagement uh, slave relocation. We established crowded slave mines in all of our precious metal locations, which has boosted our income by something like at this point 2.5 to 3 gold per month just from doing that. Of course it cost us a bit of gold to get that set up, but that that buy-in money to move the slaves around will pay for itself very very quickly with those extra precious metals that we're producing because again every month it's an extra like one gold or so. And we're beginning to get them set up in the remaining precious metal provinces that we have uh, here in Glewem and in Dewa. The other ones are already set up here. Uh, these two places both need mines still. And I think uh, Glewem is almost to getting the 12. I haven't done Dewa yet. But we have to start moving slaves from elsewhere in our nation to kind of move them over. Uh, we've basically drained away all the slaves that are close by. So let's see, where are their slaves? Over here. Are there any slaves? There are a bunch of slaves over here. This location can have their slaves moved. Um, if we can move all the slaves to Aquisilis, that should be close enough. One way we can check this is to see if um, uh, Glewem can draw tribesmen from Aquisilis, because if they can draw tribesmen, they can draw slaves. Let's check that here. Aquisilis. I'm not seeing it. I guess it's uh, locations that are directly next to it, which would have to be here in uh, Corinium. So where can Corinium draw from? We have to kind of piggyback the slaves over. Can they draw from folks over here? I don't think so. What about from Aquisilis? No. So this is going to be a little complicated because, um, unfortunately, just by coincidence, um, Aquasilis is at the edge of the region, so you can always draw population within your own region or from uh, directly adjacent settlements. So we put them all in Aquasilis, move them over to Abona, and then move them over to Corinium, and then move them over to Glewum. Unfortunately, just because of the shape of these provinces, it's three different, it's four different provinces in right next to each other, and we can't cross them over the water. And this river. The sea technically splits these two provinces, so there's another step in the middle. So it's going to be really expensive to move slaves all the way to Glowum. We have to hop them all the way over, but it's what we got to do. So let's start loading up the slaves here in Aquasulis and just get as many as we can. Here in Glowum, we are going to need only, uh, let's see here, four more slaves. So not going to be too much to ask. Um, Aquasulis can actually get that done right away from uh, Lindenis. Right now there's four in Aquasilis. Into Abona they go. Let's see, here's the four Aquasilis slaves. Scoot them over. Sorry, Aquasilis. You're going to be a good uh, settlement location for, uh, I mean, a good resource location for stone later on. Now in Abona, um, we have the five slaves. And Glowum can't get them from Abona as much as I would wish that it could. It just isn't available, so we'll have to move them over to Corinium just so it borders uh, Glowum directly with this portion here, that's the river and not the sea, confusingly. Um, it's expensive, but you know we gotta do it like this, right from Abona. Move over, two, three, four. And next month, we'll move the four over to Glowum and Glowum will be done, so that's good. And then we'll worry about Dewa uh, after another monthly tick, probably. Plus, we're almost back to getting our free idea slot. And I think I will go for the naval idea. I think it's just going to be interesting to have a navy. Um, and we're in, we're obviously, you know, we're an island nation. For much the same reason IRL, the British, uh, had a big fixation with having a big navy and being kind of a naval power. Once we control all of the isles, we're going to be in a position where we really need to have a navy to do anything. So that obviously makes sense there. So I think we will grab permanent shipyards in, well, actually, hold on. When we become a monarchy, this will get replaced again. So that being said, these are still good options for right now. Since this will be wiped and replaced with the, uh, I think it's absolute monarchy is what you start as, or autocratic monarchy, it will be replaced by a set of things. So let's actually get something that's good for right now, which could actually still be permanent shipyards, to be honest, because I might do shipbuilding before becoming a monarchy. If I'm able to, I think I should be able to. Here in Durawurnum, I've got wood, so that allows me to build the ships, the medium ships. Let's see here. I wanted to build them. Is, do I have any other port to check this on? I don't think I do. 
Yeah, it's also faster because it has the better port. I think it should be fine. I think it should be fine. Yeah, I think we're going to go for it. We will go ahead and grab that now. The thing is, when we get when we change our government again, this will all get wiped. So, um, But this is still fine even while we're on the way to monarchy. Again, we're not going to reach monarchy anytime soon, especially when we're spending our political influence on this. So let's grab that. Going wild. I said at the start of the game how much I don't care about the Navy as a tribe, but look at me now. Going full naval tribe. What a lifestyle. Truly incredible. All right. Um, over here in Glowem, we can start moving the folks in. Slave promotion is no longer allowed. Sorry. All right. Moving from Corinium. There we go. Now they're at 12. So once we have enough money for a mine, we'll build that in Glowem. And the mine will cost a hefty 190. So that's uh, 10 months? About a, a year and a half for that. All right. Probably not going to even reach it because I want to move the slaves to Doha. I'd rather have the slaves be there because they'll still do stuff as opposed to waiting to build the mine and then move the slaves. While the slaves are there, even though they're not producing another set of precious metals, they are improving the tax rate a whole bunch. So it's still fine to move the slaves before the mine. In fact, it's better to do it like that. What are you guys doing here? These, uh, these guys are in exile? What? They're retreating in exile. That's not ideal. Unfulfilled promises. Oh yeah, the Inimicus thing. I forgot about this. Inimicus Orgatoris has registered his official displeasure at our continued refusal to grant him a position benefiting his stature. To make matters worse, he has the support of a number of prominent members of our client council. Perhaps we should have acted sooner. He's getting real mad. Okay, let's go ahead and, and take care of this. I don't really want any sort of like weird civil war problem. I don't know if this would trigger a civil war, but let's not screw this up when we just uh, got everything under control. So let's go into the character list. What are we looking at here? Shoot, who am I looking for here? Inimicus, right? That's who we're dealing with. Here he is, Inimicus. Um, yeah, here he is, a revoked office and rejected, demands deflected. This is the guy, let's make sure we, we do this right. So let's give him an office. Uh, he is uh, decently capable in charisma. So Inimicus Orgatoris, let's remember that name. Move him in to an oratory themed office. Either one of these would be fine. Uh, how are the Urkia doing? All right, whatever. Um, there we go. Hope he's happy. He has really good statesmanship. I think we actually fired him recently, so that's fine. That should take care of that, uh, hopefully. Fingers crossed. <laughs> no civil war, please. <laughs> All right. I think our balance actually reduced. I'm not really sure why. I think we can lower this now. It's not going to affect our money that much, but it's mostly going to improve our integrated culture happiness a little bit. We don't need the extra morale of armies while our army isn't up. I, I should have probably had that set up before, but that's nah, fine. Um, I think corruption might be causing some of our problems here. Yeah, it is going down, but um, not uniformly. Let's see here. How are the clan chiefs looking? Oh, that's a lot of corruption. Oof. That's costing us a lot of money here. Yeah, 52% extra money to this guy, Kiltrum. Fortunately, he's quite old, so he might die soon, and his corruption goes with him. Let's see. What about our other clan chiefs? I think a lot of our money is going to wages. Yeah, 6.28 just to wages. I think... I would do something about that. However, all of our expensive, high corruption, wage, you know, swallowing guys, um, they're all really old. They're all of our elder statesmen. So they're all going to die in like the next, you know, 10 years or so. I think it's more cost effective to just kind of let them be there and be corrupt and then die rather than trying to fight the corruption that they have on their characters because it'll go away when they die. So what can we really do about it? guys still hate me. I wonder if there's anything I can do to, to improve my um, stability, or not stability, my uh, aggressive expansion. Not really, I think. Alright, we finished the port in Dorawardum. Very good. We could start building uh, ships down here. Let's see. Uh, yep, here we are. So we can build the medium ships, as I thought. Glad to see that that is indeed possible now. 
so that's good. Um, we'll deal with this later. I want to finish my my precious metal economy stuff, and then we'll worry about the navy. Carthaginian civil war ends. The bitter civil war in Carthage has finally come to an end with the loyal forces of Yutpan Gizgo utterly crushing the rebel armies led by Hamilcar Hanid and his scheming cohorts. The siege of Isle was the turning point of the war where the loyalist forces stormed the wall successfully despite horrific casualties. The outcome of this war is largely irrelevant to us as we do not consider Carthage as either a friend or enemy. Nevertheless, we ought to be careful now that their nation is on track to recovery. All right. What this might mean is Rome may be in trouble. Rome, of course, is the ancient and natural enemy of Carthage. We'll see what happens there. Maybe something interesting. Menopea is expanding. Very good. No reason to make any friends in the mainland. We'll just get drawn into wars that we don't need to care about. We'll wait until we're in a uh, monarchistic state to deal with that stuff. And to make us work is settling into his new role well. Whilst he is of the belief that this was only befitting a man of his stature, he has decided to show his gratitude by offering a small donation to the state. Hello, small donation. <laughs> That's handy. So I don't know if this is because I waited until he was, like, really mad to do this, or if he would have done this anyways, but I'll take that. Thank you. You know where that's going. Straight into the mines. Build a mine here. And now we're actually... So that basically just paid for that mine by itself. Very handy. I think... Hmm... All right, let's start moving the slaves into Dewa. From uh, Mamukium, that's fine. From Kanoium, that is fine. Kanoium again. Need six more. Kanoium. Uh, anyone who's not working in the mines already. From Aque Arnamitai. All right. This place is now very low population. I shouldn't move anyone else ever again from there. That was a little dangerous. If I ever click this button, that'll depopulate this location. It only has one person there. Let's be real careful with that. From here. Let's see here. And move you. I need two more, and no one else is available that isn't already in the mine, so we have to move people from further north. Um, we need to move people into uh, Colunium, so can you move people from up here? No slaves there. One slave there from Brokawam. Let's move you in. Where's the Brokawam slave? Brokawam, Brokawam. Here we go. From Brokawam, base metal production. Wrong kind of metal, my friend. Okay, we can move someone into uh, Werbea as well. How about from Assyrium? That sounds fine. All right, now we move them both into Dewa. From Colunium and from Rebea. There we go, all of our slaves that need to be moved for precious metals have been moved. Extremely good. And, oh wait, hold on. Did we move someone from here by accident? Oh, shoot. That was not on purpose at all. That's fine, we can fix this right now. Um, no, we can't. We'll fix it next, uh, next month. <laughs> We'll tell these folks to not uh, have slave promotion. Let's just check that in all of our, all these locations. All right, good. Uh, good, good, all right. So I, I think I moved a slave from the other location by accident. That's fine. On the next month, that will be fixed immediately and it will be totally fine. So, really leaning in hard to the economy in these couple episodes. I said I'd do this, so shouldn't be a big shocker there. All these fortresses will finish. That'll be really good. Get our north really secure. All right, here we go. This is what I wanted here. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, I'm glad I gave him that warning. I didn't notice that. Yeesh. All right, let's actually, okay, let's do this a little smartly. Let's actually move tribesmen into Mandusidum just to shore it up a little. I don't want it to just be one slave population. Move the tribesmen from honestly anywhere from this crowded horse land. That looks fine. All right, now let's do it like that. Um, there we go. All right, 12. You actually already have a mine. So that may have messed up one of my trades. Okay. That's a shame. Maybe we'll uh, get another trade offer. Okay, that's what I thought. You want that. Maybe, okay, you. That's fine. 
Yeah, that messed up one of my trades. I think I lost uh, one turn of, of uh, precious metal trading. That's okay. What, what can you do about it, really? Can't be helped. There we go. That's, our treasury is back up to normal. That's good. That's where that uh, loss came from. I was wondering what that was. So we got that figured out. Have a huge commerce income bonus there. Very good. How's Donwin doing, by the way? She's getting pretty old. Never minded. Incapable. Not doing too great. But her charisma is as good as always, so that's handy at least. Hmm. This is... A, okay, our, our cap is growing real quick. How's our culture doing here? Looking real good. I think even though I need political influence desperately, I do want to turn these last couple locations into uh, the thing, into um, uh, cultural assimilation, just so that they're operating in the background. Which of these has the biggest culture, do we think? 68, 56, uh, 52, okay, so over here, that's what I thought. I mean, this is fine, but um, I'd rather change it. Cultural simulation. Because this affects all the pops everywhere, so real handy. We're not going to have full 100% Akeni culture everywhere for probably the entire game, if not most of the game. Just because there's going to be like little holdouts of culture in like rough terrain where there's not cities or there's just sort of no one there. Just a couple tribesmen. And that's actually extremely realistic, I think, to how culture works IRL. That is how it works, where the sort of rural back county or back country retains the original culture even when there's a big culture shift happening in the urban centers. So I'm not sure if they meant for it to be that realistic, but that's effectively what happens in this game with the way the culture mechanic works, which I think is very cool that they got that to kind of be simulated like that. So nice work, uh, Paradox. Anyways, um, these guys are all becoming a Kenny. Very nice. Yeah, cultural simulation, 1.5 per month, 1.0 per month, super good stuff. Yeah, love to see it. My actual population is 274 tribesmen, or actually, hold on, it's 567 overall, of which uh, 142 are a Kenny. So our levy, yeah, up to 13, this levy is getting real powerful. We got the support unit now. This is what happens with the uh, having everything on assimilate culture. This is why I've been doing this the whole time. This in the background is just generating so many Akeni pops as we play the game. Without needing to micromanage it, we're just getting tons and tons of gradual Akeni pop growth everywhere at once. That's why I've been so keen on doing it every chance that I get, because uh, it really just adds up over time in the background, even though at any one moment it doesn't seem to be doing that much. In fact, we'll do it there too. And in a few months, we'll do it again, and everything will be as it should be. Yeah. Anyways, this is all going pretty well. Nice, quiet episode once again. Money is getting up there, too. Very good. it easy our tyranny is uh nothing we can do to because we didn't destroy that nation we didn't take any prisoners so we didn't even make money from the slave trade that's okay we're making lots of money from our regular pop slaves right now so and once this mine finishes and this mine finishes we're going to make a ton more money as well it's really going to add up plus uh let's see here this is already happening let me actually check and see here does one of these offer um one of these have a better omen effect. Tribes and happiness is fine. No, this one's actually decent monthly stab change. Um, I think pop growth is better than these for the passive. Rosemerta is totally fine, I think. I mean, I don't need two manpower recovery speed options, so maybe this one I should change from Andraste. Discipline for passive is, is really good, but fort defense isn't that important. A war score cost, that's not going to matter. Um, morale of armies plus 6%, and then plus 5% monthly military experience. This one would matter for fighting a whole lot, but I don't think we're going to need that. Aggressive expansion change. This one actually could be quite good. This could increase our aggressive expansion change by uh, about half. 
but 50% increase. The Legion maintenance cost, though, is completely useless for us right now. We need to actually become a monarchy and then learn about Legions. So this would only be for the, um, uh, the Omen effect. So am I willing to give up 3% morale of armies in exchange for a better Omen effect? In the sense that I never need to click Andraste because I already have Rosmerta. If I pick this option, I'm locking myself into keeping Rosmerta because I also want Manpower Recovery to be an option. So I think it might be worth doing because I have the stability right now to pull this off. Uh, I think 3% morale isn't as good as a selectable minus 0 0.06 aggressive expansion. Plus, I might get more omen boosts, and this aggressive expansion change will be handy if I have more really aggressive periods like I did to get to this point. Let's do it. All right, stability is fine. This will also improve our stability because now we're uh, further away from zero, or from uh, 50, I mean. So that's totally fine. Also, let's be real careful this time on the 1st of October next year to not miss that date. <laughs> that would be frustrating. Let's speed this up to speed 3. Could have probably been doing that, but that's fine. At this point, if uh, Donwin actually does pass away, we're actually really well uh, situated to handle that, so not as concerned if that does happen now. Londinium is on the way, but it's... Uh... Actually, hold on. It's actually almost there. We have a super high civilization value in Londinium now. The fortress in uh, Pier is done, and the one in Dictium is done too, and in Mamukium. So now, this is about the extent of the fortifying I think I need to do for now. Um, ah! We got a uh, military tradition. That's the same sound as when the omen spawned, so I got real scared for a moment. My, my missing the omen PTSD was triggered there. <laughs> Anyways, um, I think this is about as far as we go. We could actually fortify the border, but you know we're not trying to roleplay as the Romans in real life who had like tons of super angry Caledonians who hated their guts living right here and they had no way to really like the Romans in real life were way over here they didn't really have lots of legions around here so they needed this crazy like Hadrian's Wall fortified border we're not in that position we're way closer this is actually our core territory and we're not in danger of anything from here so we're gonna just leave it like this this does actually block anyone from coming into our, our heartland down here so that's really good I might actually fortify the southern core, um, especially once uh, Kinetio can be fortified. That will really lock things down. But I could build... Oh, this got changed to... Uh, I forgot about this. Iska Dumnornum has been the capital. I need to change this back here. Um, we look at capital. All right, let's get that fixed. Now that it's above 30, I can do this to Ulconum. Let's just do that. So, yeah, I know the province is disloyal, but it's like... It's just for right this moment. It will get fixed. Don't worry, game. I know you're getting scared, but this will be totally fine. Um, I could also use my free investitures. I kind of forgot that I had those. I'll use them in a bit there. Um, not here, of course, but Olconum. I could just build the fort in Olconum with my money. That would be the safe option to do. I, I don't need to do it right this second, but... Um, and once uh, Kinetio has the city built, I can build the fort there too. Let me look at this map mode again. So the fort here controls all of this. I could, for extra safety, build a fort here in Devon Tiastino just to secure this area. Was the salt? Yeah, this stuff is like really out there. But um, actually, I could build a port here instead. This might be the rare settlement port because this is a really good location navally to have a port at. I mean, this is forest, so I don't think I'd want to build a city to have the port and the fort. I think I'd rather have a port here than a fort. It's the rare time I build a port in a settlement and use up that building slot. So fort here, fort here. Maybe one over here? I don't really know. Actually, if I build a fort here in Noemegus Duro Trigorium, Trigoriorium, wow, these names... Uh, this is a good location for a fort purely for coverage purposes. It'll link this all up. Also, it'll link up with here. So I could build a fort here just to secure my south a little bit. That would do quite a lot, actually. It's wood here. I have plenty of wood in this region, so I don't need to build more uh, like uh, economy stuff here. Okay. 142. Um, 
Make sure I'm not overbuilding forts anywhere. Yeah, it should be totally fine. We have a... Uh... Wait, hold on. Kantiakia has six out of five forts? What? Oh, each fort, the first one is three, okay. I only have two forts here, don't I? One, two. Wait, um, the first fort uses three points and each subsequent fort uses one. Province of Kantiakia. I only have two forts, What? what is this? Look, game, one fort, Two fort. So there should be four fort level or fort infrastructure capacity. Is this costing me a ton of money? I never noticed this. What's going on here? In uh, Kantiakia, let's see. Um, Kantiakia, where does it say? What in the world? I'm actually quite confused by what this what this is about. Base plus five. Okay, that's fine. The state of province of Kantiakia. Province of Kantiakia. I only have one fourth there and one fourth there. I don't know what's going on there. I'm confused, but it's fine. I, I don't see any modifiers, so maybe it's just a UI glitch. Let's not worry about it. Let's go ahead and build a... Well, hmm, I could save my money for other matters. I think I need to build a mine in Dewa first, just to get this taken care of, get this uh, infrastructure stuff. I need 190 for that. All right, we'll, wait. we'll just wait. Forts are next after mines. Unless we have another tradition ready. Let's continue the Britonic traditions, I think. Um, we already got this one. That's been helping with our slave economy, getting that enslavement, enslavement efficiency. We could also go on raids, actually, with our guys. Hmm. Levy size multiplier, that could be quite good. We could a bunch of tribesmen in Condesio and Dictium. That's kind of handy. Free Akeni people. And army attrition minus 15%. Or cavalry bonuses. And Dora Wordum produces horses? Really? What does it produce now? What is this? It produces hemp right now. I actually want to keep producing hemp. Can I not have it produce horses? Do I not get an option for that one? I guess not. Or chariot defense. Or I do something somewhere else. Could go to Celtic traditions. Siege ability could be quite good, honestly. Or forest combat bonus. I mean, at this point, um, if I'm going to fight anywhere on the islands, there's a good chance I'll be in the forests. Because look where where's left. It's the very forested um, Hibernian coast is where I'd be. Or the very forested southern Caledonia is where I'd be. So getting that bonus could be actually quite handy. Plus hit and run sounds like a good tactic to know. I don't really know. That might just add a tactic for in battle, which is handy. And this unlocks some good stuff too. Light infantry morale could be quite good. That being said, uh, siege ability is really handy. Um, we're doing a lot of sieging in our wars. What does this lead to? Unlocks the Italic Tradition group if I have lots of Italic people. That's pretty far away, though. I think Siege Ability might actually be the best option here, because there's nothing else that really affects our whole army. Chariot Defense is obviously handy. Let's look at our Levy for a moment here. We do have a couple Chariots still. So, mm, Chariot Discipline, Chariot Offense. Uh, let's see. I think I... Mm, this gives me more tribesmen and whatnot. Tribesmen output, that's pretty good. F fort infrastructure capacity increase, that's kind of nice. <laughs> but uh, that's pretty far away. I think I might just get the levy size multiplier. This one's really boring, but this is a huge amount of like actual increase to my levy from all of my population. 2.5% more levy. It will add up to another unit in the in the levy, I think. All right, Confederation. Uh, many tribes maintain close relations with their neighbors, guaranteeing a certain amount of cooperation when it come when it came to battle. War bands likely com comprised members of many different local tribes, all fighting for glory. Let's get that. All right. Let's see if that actually affected our levy. 
Uh, no, in fact, I think our levy, did it get smaller? I don't know what's going on. We'll check on that later. <laughs> All right, mine in there is done. Very good. So, uh, what's happened here? Is this the wages adding up more? I don't really know what's going on. I will see what happens. Can I do something to improve this province of loyalty faster? I think because this province is disloyal, it might be affecting my economy a little bit. Um, so actually, let's use our, our uh, investitures very carefully here. I have three free investitures of any kind. So let's go here into Londinium and use them here, I think. In fact, do I want to keep Londinium on uh, assimilation when I could be bleeding it dry? This place is now only around 60% Akeni. I could switch this over to cultural assimilation because it does have a fair number of non Akeni living there. I think it might be worth it, honestly. Lose a bit of money, but it is better to get everyone to my culture, so let's do that. And I keep saying I need to save this, but uh, I want to get it all good. I'm just going to leave everything on cultural assimilation for a while. Let's not worry about that. Meanwhile, um, could get a uh, religious complexes here. I do have two cities here, so that could be quite handy. Um, or more import routes. I think I'd like to get the extra import route, because I could get... Um, I could change around my imports a little bit. Or, ah, ah, there's so many options. If I get this, that would fix our fort infrastructure problem, but this is not super useful aside from that. I don't really understand where this is coming from. Is one of my locations, like, counting as forts, even though it's not a fort? I only have one fort here, so that counts as three. Four. That's it. There's no other forts anywhere in here, is there? Hmm. I think I will just go ahead and do the... Uh, local import route. Good to do in your capital region. Let's do it. Alright, sweet. That's going to be a good place to stop for this episode. Thank you so much for watching another slower-paced economic-themed episode. But as you can see, our economy is getting under control, and within this year, we're going to get back on track with our omens. That will boost our commerce, or not our commerce, that will boost our, um, our bonuses quite a bit. And we'll see about even more economic uh, micromanagement that we can do to boost our economy even more, maybe even starting to build some ships as we get close to unlocking those missions. Let's check on Londinium here. 38.45, it's 0.11 every month. It'll get to 40 next episode, I think, which means we can at least advance that one mission. And then it's just a wait for the political influence. At this point, I am declaring no more PI uh, use on anything else except for that mission. I need to save it up for that, so <laughs> we're going to hold me to that. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.